Hello, we're Andy, the maniacal cinephile, and welcome to Boots to Reboots. Today, we're heading to the House of Wax. Ooh, my favorite Vincent Price movie. And my second favorite Paris Hilton movie. All of these The 2005 remake of House of Wax was directed by first-time director Jama Kletsera, who went on to direct Orphan and Black Adam. The remake was written by Chad Hayes and Carrie W. Hayes, who wrote all the Conjuring films. I thought this movie felt embellished. It is a very loose remake of the 1953 film of the same name, which was a faithful remake of the 1933 film Mystery of the Wax Museum, based on the story The Wax Works by Charles S. Belden. Jeez, it has more titles than that Tom Cruise movie. House of Wax was the fifth film from Dark Castle Entertainment, founded by Joel Silver and Robert Zemeckis. Their previous films were House on Haunted Hill, 13 Ghosts, Ghost Ship, and their highest grossing movie, Gothica, which has a 14% on Rotten Tomatoes. Mystery of the Wax Museum and 1953's House of Wax share an identical plot. A talented sculptor's wax museum is burned down by his partner for insurance money. With his hands destroyed by the fire, our artist hires pupils to take over and he rebuilds his works of art by body snatching corpses from the morgue and turning them into wax figures. Our heroine recognizes his Joan of Arc. In fact, there's a lot of familiar faces in the wax museum that look like missing people. Before she is also turned into a wax figure of Mary Antoinette, our monster is revealed. Let me go! Let me... The police save her, and the disfigured artist is thrown into a vat of boiling wax. The 2005 remake of House of Wax is not a period piece set in foggy London or New York, but a modern slasher film. It has very little in common with the previous versions, and at times, feels more like a remake of Tourist Trap. So, let's cross House of Wax off the list and see if it deserves... The Boot. The film opens in 1974, and we see a mother pour wax into a face mold as one of her sons eats. Even as a boy, he was a serial killer. The father brings in the other brat and has to strap him into the high chair. <laughs> because when Lucifer made him, he really broke the mold. For breakfast, we also had to eat knuckle sandwiches. Cut to present day. Uh, night, and we meet Carly and her boyfriend, Wade, played by Supernatural's Jared Padalecki. Sorry, there are these two drunk rednecks wrestling in the bathroom. Really? Rednecks wrestling in the bathroom? That's hot. We also meet her friend, Paige, played by Paris Hilton, and her boyfriend, Blake, who has found a shortcut. I think it'll save us an hour. So we could spend more time. More time reading your Bible, no doubt. Lastly, there's her evil twin brother, Nick, recently bailed out of jail, and his friend, Dalton. I was the good twin, and Nick was the evil twin, as he likes to say. He totally played it up as if that's what he had to be or something. When you get an evil reputation, 
you don't like to disappoint. Uh, up, get a man? job. Maybe the bum took his advice and he saved up money for college. Or crack. Looks like someone's spending a second night in Paris. The gang are on their way to a big college football game. Wait, what'd you do? Go to the barbershop and ask for a He-Man haircut or what? <laughs> no, he wanted to look like Farrah Fawcett. Oh my god. Uh, look at her, look at her. You are oh. so busted. Lip balm. I dropped my stupid lip balm. She dropped her lip balm. She was applying it with his penis. On the way, they pass a sign for Trudy's House of Wax. Yeah, I guess if you like things pretending to be other things, which you obviously do. Wade is a fan of Dinobots. Tired, they set up camp for the night in a wooded area where we learn Paige may be preggers. I've been late before. I want to know for sure. I promise to talk to him, okay? Like the shortcut, it doesn't go anywhere. The boys then toss the old pigskin around, and somewhere, Tommy Wiseau approves this scene. See why they gave you a scholarship. He throw ball good. Suddenly, a foul stench blows in from the woods. Oh, it's horrible. Come on, Paris Hilton's acting isn't that bad. <coughs> uh. While Dalton records the gang having fun, a stranger in a pickup truck arrives, blinding them with their headlights. Oh, thank you. Please kill them. Turn your lights off. Hello? Turn your lights off. Inside the truck, the driver is furiously trying to figure out how to turn off the light. It's a new truck. I don't know what to do. Littering. He really is the evil twin. The stranger leaves, but that night, someone steals Dalton's camera and records the Beverly Witch Project. Now to draw penises on their faces. The next morning... Hey, it's 2 30, get up! Okay, the next afternoon... When Wade's car won't start, he discovers that the fan belt has been cut. It was brand new. And his mechanic would never lie. Paige then notices the return of the foul stench. Oh my god, there's that smell again. That's just her morning BM. The girls follow the smell, leading to... <laughs> Yummy! Looks like somebody found lunch! If only someone could give her a hand! <laughs> Wade helps her up as a local man in a truck arrives to add more roadkill to the corpse pile. Lester is played by Damon Harriman, who played Charles Manson in Mindhunter and Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Don't you see that? What is that? I found it on the side of the road a few weeks ago. Whoever hit it didn't notice the mannequin crossing sign. The rest of the group get stuck in traffic heading to the football game, while Lester, who looks like the grown-up banjo kid from Deliverance, offers to drive Wade and Carly to the nearby town of Ambrose, Louisiana. Love that chicken from Popeyes. I kinda get used to the smell. You can get used to anything if you're around it long enough. Like the flies circling his head. Carly then gets uncomfortable seeing Lester has a knife. You wanna see it? That's okay. It's a good knife. If someone is giving you hitchhiker vibes from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, marry him. I have this knife. It's a good knife. Carly and Wade decide they'd rather walk the rest of the way. Damn it, he's not naked. 
and try and do something nice for someone. But man, it's not like that, all right? He worked really hard on that body odor. Miss Ambrose, wonder how many teeth you have to have to win that one. <laughs> You automatically win if you have teeth. Because Jared Padalecki is a foot taller than Alicia Cuthbert, she had to tape two inch blocks of wood to the bottom of her boots. Like Tom Cruise. In the deserted town of Ambrose, Carly and Wade look for help and interrupt a funeral. I object to this wedding! They meet Bo, the gas station attendant, who isn't too happy. In fact, he's downright bitchy. You walk in on a funeral for a fucking fan belt? And a pine tree air freshener. Well, let me just go dump the cask in the ground. I'll be right there. Now that is service. While waiting on Bo, they visit Trudy's House of Wax, a wax museum, which is a highlight of the ghost town. Some people get off on that kind of thing. That's right, Wax Daddy. Pour it all over me. It is wax. Like, literally. Literally. Everything in here is wax. The floor, the walls. Look at this. This is wax. Literally. You're telling me someone took the title House of Wax and literally made a house of wax. Literally! Aren't there supposed to be famous people in a wax museum? I don't recognize this guy. You know, recognizable celebrities like Leo, Michael Jackson, Princess Diana, Elvis, Sean Connery, Nicole Kidman, and Bean. <laughs> yeah, haha, -ha, laugh it up. What's a dog doing in here anyway? Unlike you, he bought a ticket. This Vincent guy's quite the artist. A nod to Vincent Price, who has his own art museum. Oh no, there's a fire. Help me, Carly. Careful, you light that dress and the whole place could burn. Oh, look, a mirror in a horror movie. I hope there isn't a jump scare. Duh! I said Tommy Wiseau, and he appeared! That's why I never look in mirrors. Speak for yourself! I love my own reflection! <laughs> oh, would you hurry up and back into something already? <laughs> What's the point of a maid if she leaves a mess? He's got everything but a 15 inch. Problems you run into when you're shopping for a dildo. Ahem. Out of 15-inch fan belts, Bo wants them to come up to his house where he might have one. On the way, Bo tells them about the Sinclair family. Doc Sinclair fled due to malpractice and ended up in Ambrose. Trudy found her calling in wax until she developed a cyst in her brain, making her crazy. She had to be tied to the bed, and the whole town could hear her screams. But that was her kink. Doc eventually put a bullet in his head, and their boys ended up in foster homes. So when does the partner burn down the museum for insurance money? Carly waits in Bo's truck, while Wade needs to take a supernatural dump. Inside, Wade discovers specimens in jars and medical tools. So far, my favorite character is Pickled Pig. Don't tell me that's used in gynecology! Having waited all night for Wade to poop, Carly gets out and notices Bo's truck has the broken headlight, so she honks the horn. Wade! Wade! That weirdo is the weirdo! In the dark, Wade is attacked by Bo's twin brother, Vincent, who wears a mask made of wax. Oh. 
Wade, you have another leg to stand on. Look at me getting away. Great. Now Wade pooped again. Hey, Wade! Was his boot also made out of wax? Having missed the game, Paige and Blake return to the campsite while Nick and Dalton look for Carly. We learned that Nick took the blame for Dalton stealing and crashing a car. You didn't have to cover for me, dude. Hey, your jacket's clean. All right, mine's already got plenty of stains on it. Do not shine a black light on it. When Bo returns, Carly quickly outs him and he attacks. You're the guy from the campsite. <laughs> you broke his headlight, so he'll break his window. Like that truck, the rest of her night is going downhill. Oh, are you like me better than Wade, right? Well, he's not so bad. Oh, he's been better. Meanwhile, Vincent gives Wade one hell of a Brazilian wax job. <laughs> now that'll be 50 bucks. <laughs> is this turning into an eye exam? It's an automatic car wash simulator. Well, Wade, did you get the full wax museum experience? Carly returns to the church where she discovers everyone is made out of wax. I knew it. Only fake people go to church. It's revealed that the service was for Trudy Sinclair. Reliving your mom's funeral? Dude, let it go. Your mom is dead. You know what? At least she got a casket. Hey, they still charge me $200 for that cardboard box. Bo then finds Carly in the one place you wouldn't expect an adult female. Under the robes of a priest. Carly is chased, but Bo catches her and takes her down to the gas station cellar. Still better than taking her to Applebee's. The stars. So Bo is the evil twin. It's a shame we have to close that pretty mouth of yours. Alicia Cuthbert insisted that they use real super glue. Uh, his breath smells like Slim Jims. Uh. When Nick and Dalton finally arrive, they decide to split up. All right, check it. I'm going to go this way. All right, you go that way. You go that way. I'll go home. How stupid. Do they not realize they're in a scary movie? I call it wisely sacrificing your friends. When Carly hears her brother Nick, she attempts to get his attention. What was that? Nothing, that was just my dog. His dog's farts sound like feminine cries for help. <sighs> Noticing a hangnail, Bo gives Carly a manicure. working for tips. He seriously didn't hear that. Was the orchestra too loud? Spreading her lips, she manages to get Nick's attention. I saw a similar fight over the last gas station hot dog. Once again, Bo is locked out and Nick frees his sister. He did this to you? No, she owes the mob money. Meanwhile, Dalton enters the house of wax and finds Wade trapped in a wax coating to prevent mold and retain moisture like the cheese. 
Dalton tries to peel away the wax, but removes Wade's skin in the process. What happened, man? At least he hasn't lost his smile. Vincent strikes as he chases Dalton down the basement stairs. <laughs> Dear God, even the candles are made out of wax! Vincent then whips out his cool dragon knives and decapitates Dalton. Dalton, blink if you need help! Carly explains to Nick that all of the wax figures are actually wax-coated corpses. You don't get it. They're all wax, everyone. How I would describe the Kardashian family. You're saying that that's a real person underneath? Hard to believe there's a real person under all those hair curlers. Meanwhile, back at the campsite, while their friends are dying horribly, Paige gives Blake a strip tease. Come here, sex. Excuse me, the floor is not a hamper. They've been alone for hours, and it's taken them this long to boink? Setting the mood, Blake notices he has a voicemail. This is my truck. You're the guy from the campsite. <laughs> Another damn telemarketer. Meanwhile, Vincent sneaks into the tent, and Paige discovers Blake is dead. <laughs> That's one way to get out of fatherhood. Paige is chased to the abandoned sugar mill, where she hides. Paris, now is not the time to check your Instagram! Still better than being chased by the paparazzi. Wounded, Paige then tries to hide in an old car. Because you'll never find Paris Hilton in the back seat of a car. Paige is then killed with a metal pipe. And yet somehow, it completely missed her brain. Not the first time she's been recorded on her knees, taking pipe to the face. But will the killer cover her in wax? Or plaster of Paris? These films did have some interesting marketing strategies. The Mystery of the Wax Museum was filmed in two-color Technicolor, which is why half the wax figures are real people, since the wax would melt under the intense lights needed for the process. Or so they say, it could have been a budget thing. The 1953 House of Wax was shown with stereophonic sound and in 3D. Speaking of a mouthful of balls, then there's Paris Hilton. Meanwhile, for the 2005 House of Wax, a marketing campaign was launched entitled, See Paris Die. Horror fans weren't thrilled with the casting and were promised she'd get a gruesome death. Honestly, her performance isn't awful with the little she's given. She's not acting like her dumb Paris Hilton TV character. It'd be fine, except the camcorder keeps reminding us she had a sex tape. Ew, Paris Hilton. Nick breaks into a store to grab a crossbow, as Bo fires a shotgun at them. So far, the town of Ambrose is more welcoming than Detroit. Bo chases them into a movie theater, playing Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Down in front! AMC's new policy to keep moviegoers from texting. Bo misses, but Nick does not, allowing Carly to flee. Wait, what happens to baby Jane? Nick waits for Bo at the entrance and then shoots him again. <laughs> he wasn't expecting these characters to do something that clever. 
Something in his pockets. Except someone's fingertip. Ew, gross. The twins then head up to Bo's house. I'm not leaving you. Why do you have to be so damn stubborn? It's gross that she has more sexual chemistry with her brother than Wade. Even Nick and Dalton have more sexual chemistry than Carly and Wade. It ain't happening. Nothing personal. Nice parking job. It's about as good as I can parallel park. Inside the house, Carly conveniently finds some newspaper clippings explaining what the hell is going on. It turns out Bo and Vincent are Siamese twins that were separated by their father in a controversial procedure. The doc played the offspring on repeat until the babies tore apart from each other. You gotta keep them separated. The wax mask covers the facial disfigurement Vincent has from where he was conjoined with Bo. Speaking of Bo, when you have no parents, you can stumble in late, covered in arrows, and vomit. <laughs> Bo shot with a crossbow. I really hope his middle name isn't Longsword. Vincent then pulls up with Blake's vehicle and their bodies. Who's gonna feed her three chihuahuas? Ma will be proud. Yeah, she'd be real proud. That you can emote better than Paris Hilton. After Bo notices some photos on the ground, Carly and Nick sneak into the basement looking for a light. Excuse me, I'm trying to learn how to read! Nick then finds Dalton's unlucky hat. No! How I feel when I'm drawing and break my crayon. With Vincent on the way, Nick starts a fire in the workshop, allowing them to escape upstairs, running past Wade's figure. No! Oh my god, Wade! Huh. No! Don't worry, I'm sure his brother Dean will find a way to bring him back. I'm not a Paris Hilton BFF. I've never even seen House of Wax. Like the previous versions, the remake's finale features a fist fight as the building begins to melt and the figures crack open, revealing corpses. Excuse me, ma'am, you can't smoke in here. The boys battle, and Nick is stabbed in the leg before Carly beats Bo to death with a baseball bat. <laughs> the new rules has made baseball more exciting. Again, I applaud that instead of dropping the bat, she keeps swinging. <laughs> Vincent mourns the death of his twin brother. Hey, my favorite song by Slipknot. Vinny then chases Carly to the top floor. I swear to God if you hurt her! He will bleed all over you! How I felt going to Texas in the summer. Nick gives chase as everything melts. Well, now they're ripping off a nightmare on Elm Street. The killer cuts through the door and a statue of the two boys. Good. Vincent remembers what the offspring taught him. You gotta keep them separated. No! The wax on the bed was actually peanut butter. What were they doing with that dog? Carly then tries to reason with Vincent over his brother's treachery. You're not afraid! He was! Look, if being a disfigured loner creating weird stuff in your basement lair makes you a freak, then call me a f 
<laughs> oh god. <laughs> I'm a freak. <laughs> Nick tackles Vincent and rips off his melting mask. Now that is some ugly CGI. Yeah, the unmaskings in the other versions were much better. With Vinny distracted, Carly is able to shank him. All this because of a college football game. A dead Vincent falls through the floor and lands on top of his dead brother. It's like they're conjoined again. Get it? Dick to butt? What? Yeah. As the House of Wax melts to the ground, Nick and Carly escape through a giant A-hole. If only it were a house of pancakes. Out of the way! We got a live one! The next morning, the police arrive and explain that Ambrose had been abandoned for 10 years since the old sugar mill shut down. How could no one have known about all of this? Through bad writing, all things are possible. Maybe there's some good memories on this. Like seeing Paris Hilton die. As Nick and Carly are driven away by the ambulance, one of the officers is told some disturbing news. Trudy and the doctor didn't have two sons. They had three. The dog? What? No, little buddy, it's Lester. Never trust anybody named Lester. A financial disappointment, the remake eventually made its money back on home video sales and rentals. I put this movie off for years because my brain automatically told me it sucked because it's a remake starring Paris Hilton. I expected the worst. However, I must admit, I was wrong. Instead of another rehash, they took the title and setting and completely did their own thing. It doesn't reinvent the wheel, is full of cliches, dumb moments, is 20 minutes too long, the themes feel half-baked, and it's preposterous most of the time. But I didn't hate it. In my Tourist Trap video, I stated it was a guilty pleasure and could maybe use a remake. And this is it. The director admitted in Fangoria magazine that his film is a remake of Tourist Trap by everything but name, but the studio decided to cash in on House of Wax nostalgia. You have a group of teens, the museum, the owner who walks with a limp for no reason, and the so-called brother who wears a mask. So, does House of Wax deserve the boot? Surprisingly not. You know what? Forget Paris Hilton! Done. In recent years, the remake has grown more popular and has gained a cult following. It has aged better than other teen slashers made in the mid-2000s. There are thrills, the deaths are unique, the set design is creepy, the killer is creative, and the two leads actually fight back. It takes a while to get going, but once it does, I enjoyed the atmosphere and cat and mouse chase. It's a formulaic, but better than average, slasher film. Will someone get a bucket? We've been Andy, the maniacal cinephile. Thanks for liking and subscribing. We'll see you next time.